Ready? Yep, we kind of already discussed it a couple hours ago here. Right. Great. All right, great. Yeah, I think the, the preparation here is really good. Let me just find a couple notes that uh, Liz made up for me here, and I'll be uh, ready to rock. Yeah, I'm going to pull the point right here, too. We'll be good to go then. What was I that, Mike? Like? Broadcast, uh, Mike, but we can, we can edit it with the Camtasia still. Oh no, it's just, it's fine. I mean, I think that this is good. So let's uh let's uh let's get uh get rock and roll in. Um, all right. So uh, obviously this is Mike here um, on the road, and uh, we're uh, this is a really cool thing that uh, that uh, Liz and uh, Michael Bittler have uh, put together for us. We're um, we're here with uh, James. Uh, is, is it James Harbaugh? Is that the right Harbaugh, way of saying yep. it? Harbaugh. Yep. Yep. We're, we're uh and and James is from uh. uh uh, keyword inspector, and he has some uh, some other tools. The uh, simple keyword inspector, and uh, kind of the more advanced version. And these are um, these are tools. Not, not a lot of people are using them in Amazon, but uh, but Liz uses them, and uh, so does uh, uh, so does Michael Bittler. And uh, this is going to give us like some some really uh, a really different perspective on things, different kinds of diagno uh, diagnostics. Uh, which is cool, actually. Liz and I were just looking over Elite Serum um, and uh, some of the uh, keywords that are currently converting for us, and it led us to a, a few ideas about. It. So, you know, Liz will uh, take us through that as we go along. Uh, Liz, um, how long have you been using uh, 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 Jack's uh, wares here? Uh, I've been using uh, James' tool. I think it's oh, probably James, sorry. Be about. We we, we we have Jack Harvell, and, and then uh, we, oh. have, we have James uh, uh, James Harvell. My my, uh, my total they're, apologies. How long have you been using James' uh, tools here? They're actually really similar names, though, if you think about it. James Harville. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, I just got it mixed up too. So never mind. Yeah. We won't talk about that. But I've been using uh, <laughs> James's tools for. I want to say that it's probably since he started offering them. So maybe how long have you been offering him, James? Like nine, ten months, maybe a year. Uh, it's getting close to a year now. Probably right. yeah, nine, ten months. Okay, so I've been using them for the majority of those nine or ten months and I can say that they're definitely incredibly useful and I think they, they're that useful from the perspective of James is also an Amazon seller so he gets things and not just that but um, I've met with James several times I recently got to spend some time with him uh, down um, at an event that we were both at and one of the real cool things about James is that he actually uh, also started the same way that I did which is in the retail arbitrage game and I feel that when you start from the retail arbitrage game, you have such a huge advantage because of some of the things that you actually um, get to learn. And I think Michael Bittler also started from that too. So I feel like you just have a huge advantage. And then add on top of that, like James' ability to kind of recognize that these tools are necessary for Amazon sellers. Uh, and that combination of all those things makes some of his tools like one of the most like necessary set of tools that I need uh, in order to operate Amazon. So. The, my favorite tool that he actually has is the simple keyword inspector. Uh, I do and, use. And Liz, Liz yeah. can I get you back up for a second? Because sure. I'm sure the people watching this are wondering, uh, what are the skills that you acquire in retail arbitrage? What are the perspectives that you gain that um, that, that are literally helping you have uh, uh, you know a kind of boost your success? What are some of the things that that they need to know so that so they don't have to jump back into retail arbitrage to get the right kind of background they need to to have success your way? For starters, I believe it's really just the ability to operate within Seller Central uh, at a much better level than somebody that just starts off by wanting to sell their own private label items. Uh, but I feel that Mike and I have kind of already given people some insight as to what it takes to operate Seller Central from the back end. And the second thing, which is something that just comes with experience, and I'm pretty sure James and Michael will both agree on this, but it's just the ability to sort of be able to tell trends, and not just trends, but the ability to be able to tell what items are selling well already because you have experience selling other people's items and sort of just jump into categories that other people would never be able to tell unless they were actually already selling that item so it's just sort of like an experience thing and retail arbitrage people just sort of know a lot better tricks uh, in fact to this day I still hang out in a lot of retail arbitrage circles just because they're usually like on the, it's so strange they're usually on the cutting edge and they all sort of like curse the private label game uh, so they don't really know what realize what they're missing uh, because retail arbitrage is very hard work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so well, uh, from hearing you talk about it, I can really I, I can 
uh, have a little bit more perspective as what what it is that led uh, James to uh, create this uh, the simple keyword inspector where we can get these scrapes and get an idea of the performance of various uh, products you know in terms of keyword by keyword. So I think this is going to be a really exciting event. Absolutely. All right, and uh, Mike, um, how do you? Uh, so, so, uh, so actually, Liz, first of all, I cut you off. You were saying that, that your uh, the tool that you like the most is the the simple keyword inspector. Right. So that's the number one tool that I really use uh, that James does. And you know, I I've also used the other ones, but I really haven't been able to dig as deep into them as I have uh, keyword inspector. Um, but I absolutely love that tool. I I find it necessary not only for listing, but also to optimize my listing over the course of time. And I'm pretty sure James will go into some of those techniques as he uh, gets into kind of showing everyone how to use it. But that's certainly my two favorite spots to use um, that tool in. So I know that Mike, um, Michael Bittler also loves using them. So I, maybe you want to tell some people what tools you actually like to use, Michael? Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, the thing about the key, simple keyword inspector, I've known, you know, James Harwell for, you know, about the, the same year that uh, the Liz has uh, worked with him, you know, and I think really kind of right at about to the beginning of when he started putting this out, we were the early beta testers on the software, so we got to see very early on the advantages of doing a reverse ASIN search, and basically what it does, and it's still amazing how he does this, but looking at our competitors' ASINs, we're able to identify what keywords are generating uh, traffic and business for our competitors and then able to use those keywords and optimize their listings, and um, so that's I mean that's been the one that was really kind of amazing to be in the in the beginning, but then you know he just keeps adding on to give us more and more you know more is more right Mike, so you know as we as we get into this um, we start looking at more of the stuff that he's doing he's put together you know coupon tracking tools and you know scarcity tools and uh, you know pay per click tracking, uh, and one of the things that I really love is the real time reports that he's been able to pull out of Amazon that haven't been able to find anywhere else. Things that include, you know, phone numbers of your customers so that you can start sorting those out by ASINs and customer types and demographics and start creating custom audiences for Facebook. And I've, I've found that to be probably just incredible with the amount of data that he's been able to pull out of Amazon. And, um, you know, he keeps coming up with more great stuff. So, you know, that's, that's really kind of the exciting thing. He's probably one of the premier you know, minds of coming up with these things and products that are needed well in advance of, you know, of when we're actually, uh, you know, before you even think you need it, it's like, wow, okay, that, that's a pretty great tool. How do you come up with that? So, um, Liz, I think uh, Mike dropped off for a second, so I'm going to toss right. it to you until uh, Mike comes back on. Okay, cool. Well, I, I find, like, ex everything that you said is exactly the same uh, things that, like, I, I do. Like, I love the reverse ASIN search, uh, which uh, was first introduced to me by actually watching one of James's videos when he was kind of introducing his tool. And one of the things that I did want to point out before I pass it over to you, James, is although your tool's really not like mainstream because a lot of people would not aren't haven't really been like allowed to talk about it on other sorts of forums and stuff. I feel that the top sellers or the people that take their Amazon business very seriously actually have come across your tool and begun to use it. Um, and so leading into your demonstration of what your tool does and, and all that good stuff, um, would you agree with what I say, uh, what I just said? Yeah, I think um, those that, that know, are in the know, are uh, kind of at the top of their game. I mean, not to toot my own horn, but, you know, I'm... So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, my name's James, and uh, I've been doing this... I uh, started retail arbitrage out of a garage, uh, selling my own stuff and then garage sale stuff and then slowly got into private label and I found that you know I'm one of those guys that hates, I like to set it, forget it and also like to automate stuff so I find that if I can't find something that can automate it, um, I don't do it. So that's, I know there's so many things out there I could be doing right now to make more money but uh, just because it's not automated yet. Uh, I don't do it. So um, on that note, I I had I don't have an actual real like background in programming, but I've dabbled in it before and 
um, a quick study, I guess. So I just kind of took what I knew and and kind of just kind of just threw together this this tool. Um, that's I didn't really know exactly what I was going to do with it with the data I was collecting, but I, I kind of threw it all together and um, it's, it turned out well. And basically, what 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 this tool ends up doing is it's a reverse essence tool. What what that means is you uh you can find all the keywords that a uh, uh, a product or asin comes up under a key, each all the keywords that it comes up under for the first page. Um, so that's that's basically what it does and, and on top of that I added my own little uh, my beta algorithm and, and put a whole bunch of data points together so that all this data I have, all this historical data, I kind of put it all into a, an algorithm, a big long two two page query on a database and it spits out this this cool uh, keyword list of keywords uh, kind of a range from best keyword to worst keyword. So, uh, do you want me to go into that now more, or do you? Uh, do yeah, you we just got Mike Long back, so he's back. So, uh, Mike James was just giving us a quick rundown of what his tool does. Um, James, do you think you'd rather just go over one of Mike's uh, spreadsheets, or did you want to show us one that you have prepared? Um, we can go over Mike's since his is ready to go here. Great. Sure. And uh, kind of what I've done here is I've actually shown uh, actually like four different competitors' ASINs. Uh, I did a search for uh, insoles for kids, and you can see up here at the top the, uh, the search that I did. And, you know, so that if I had done the search, insoles for kids, these would have been the top products that came back on that search. And so, uh, James, why don't you go ahead and if you want to uh, kind of take over, you can kind of tell them what we did with it. Mike, is there any way for us to zoom in on that? Because it's 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 pretty small for me as I'm looking at it here. We we can um, we will lose some of the, some of the data off to the right, but we can uh, we can always scroll. Okay, great. Thanks. We'll we'll kind of start there, and then we can kind of scroll through it a little bit. Great. Should I kind of backtrack a little and show kind of a little bit of the front end of the tool and? Yeah, why don't you do that? I'll I'll turn that over to you if you want to. Take uh, one of these ASINs, for instance. You can probably uh, put that into the in the box, and then we'll have those results there right away. So, if you want to do your screen share, James, we can uh, we can kind of show them how we got there. Yeah, hopefully it works here. I, sometimes I have problems sharing my 4K screen. <laughs> huh. uh, you see it? Yep, we got it. Okay, let me zoom in here. Yeah, lots of zooming is good. So uh, it's uh, tools available at simple.keywordinspector.com, and then it'll take you to the main page. And uh, basically, uh, I've got it set up as a credit system for searches. Um, and right down here, right on the whole page, you just you stick it in ASIN or a bunch of ASINs. Um, and I'll sh we'll, I guess we'll probably go through how to find an ASIN if you guys don't know that. But you stick them in here, so like, yeah, uh, Michael's adds them in here, however many as you want to to do, and then um, you click you uh, click a search type, and I'll go through that too. Um, but you click search, and then it'll it'll in the background it'll it'll pull up all this all this data for you, all the keywords that it, this comes up under, um, and then it'll send an email out when it's ready to ready for you to view. Um, so down here you click whatever you want, simple or uh, extensive. Uh, simple are usually just good for like if you want to find your your essence page ranks for the first page. Um, and that's what it's best for, so that's basically good for any essence. But when you're really doing some like deep dive research for uh, products that you're going to sell, um, you want to use the extensive search to get that, that ranking, that ranking of the keywords. Um, Based on my algorithm and my data points, so um, again, you just type in search. Go down here. We'll just do simple, and then um, it'll do that. And then down here, uh, you can do a click on search history. And I know I I realize this uh, site looks really uh, old and dilapidated, but 
I'm just not a front end developer. I'm a whole I'm a back end developer, so I haven't had the I haven't taken the time to really pretty this up, but I, I promise you it works good. I haven't really had any problems with people like not being able to use it. So I'm slowly gonna be working on the I think front end, but <laughs> so I think anybody watching this right now just wants uh how it looks. What's that? Oh, I said I think anybody watching this just wants to use it to make money. Yeah, so, uh, as long that's as kind of my thought. That's why I didn't really put a lot of time and effort into the front end. But um, so yeah, um, this is some extra stuff here that doesn't really show up in the uh, regular users thing. But right, uh, looks like it's already done. So right here, we go to this, and then um, here. So this this was just a simple search. So that's why it took uh, only took a few seconds. Um, but it because I got the database um, of everything, so this this brings up like uh, just uh, the first page results. Um, so like for this this asset, it came up uh, first uh, in the first position on the first page for this for this one and this one and this one and and actually kind of backtrack to how my how my thing works. It it actually I'm scraping the the Amazon suggestion bar like constantly. Using like a like, I don't know, I'm just using a certain way of scraping it so that I get as many keywords as I can from it every every day basically, and from all that database of I think it's over 20 million, maybe 25 million by now keywords that I've got, all Amazon uh, customer bike queries. Um, from that, I'm scraping all the first pages of each result of each keyword, and then I'm able to take uh, all them assets that I got. And kind of, kind of flip around the search from to a, do a reverse ascent search again. So, so that's how I'm able to get all of these keywords. Right. Um, let's see. I don't, know, I don't know how many there are right here, but you can sometimes a, an ascent might not get a lot of keywords just because it's too new, or if it's just one of them products that people don't really that really know what they want. They really know what they want, so they know what to type in. But like this one probably has four or five hundred keywords, but some. Like Bluetooth speakers or you know something really generic is going to get like thousands of keywords. So um, again, this is just a simple search. So it gives you all the all the the page rankings and uh, this data is is updated around seven days. Every seven days, it's updated. Um, so it goes through 25, 20 million plus keywords like once every week to get you fresh data. Um, so okay. James, um, I, I'm yep. just going to interrupt here for a minute. So how would people, because uh, I know we got a lot of people that are brand new. Yeah. How would people actually use this sort of information to help them? Like, what what's your, what would you advise them to use this information for? So this 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 uh, information is good for two things: one for your product listing creation and optimization of your titles and your. Uh, and your search term fields, and you're also you want to put in use as many of the keywords you can in, in your uh, your descriptions and your uh, your bullet points. Even though Amazon doesn't really take from that when they're making searches, uh, relevant searches and stuff. So um, it's good for that. It's also good for Amazon uh, pay per click advertising because um, a lot of I found uh, through some of my newer tools that I've been working on that. You know, it's maybe 10 to 10 to 30 percent of the keywords that come up here aren't actually advertised on by by anybody. Now that's a kind of a rough number. I haven't really went into the analysis of it, but so you could use a lot of these keywords for PPC and probably not have much of any competition, and you'll probably get some clicks and sales out of it just from using it that way. So. Yeah, so let, me, let me just kind of repeat what you just said. Are you telling us that 70 to 90 percent of these keywords that people are searching for, nobody is doing any kind of sponsored ads? No, it's like 10. I think I said 10 to 30 percent. So right, that that actually are meaning there's like 70 to 90 percent that aren't that aren't sorry available with nobody on them at all. No, you. I think you heard me. It, that's flipped around. Okay, it's like, it's like 10 to 30 that aren't being. Advertised on. Um, and that's, that's kind of a rough number right now, but I'm working on getting a better number. But yeah, so it's pretty crazy. Um, again, for for product research, it's good just to see kind of see like 
because there's some some products are kind of brand dominated. You can kind of tell that by doing just a few searches. So let's say you go to the Amazon new releases or uh, high release top sellers. If you go there and find a product you want to sell. Um, And uh, say you want to go for this one, you know that, you know this scale might be brand dominated. And you'll be able to figure that out by just doing a few searches. Um, even though you know some products might will show up on some brand searches and some won't, you can kind of gauge that way uh, as far as that. But also you can kind of figure out you know, what people are using to search, and then uh, you want to stick them in your titles because that's basically the title up here is what. Amazon pulls from, for the most part, sorry, uh, to uh, create their, uh, their their the query the lists of products that come up for a search keyword. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know what else. <laughs> oh, um, the other thing I was going to ask James, I'm sorry, I was actually talking to myself there for a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Um, going back to that report that you pulled for the simple report. Yeah. So let me just make sure that I understand this correctly because I typically use the extensive report. So this sure. kind of simple re report's kind of new to me, but it's sort of like just fascinating me because you gave me a great idea. Um, going back to all these keywords, those keywords that you were showing there, all the arch support ones that, that showed the number one, what that basically means is that this particular product ranks number one on page one for those products. Is that correct? Um, say it again. So if you go back to the simple report, yep. what it's saying is that that particular product that we just did the simple uh, scrape of, the I guess it's the kids -erts, is that? oh no, it was the one pair, flat feet, whatever it was. So what this report says um, is that this particular product ranks number one on page one for all these words that are number right. one. Okay. Yep, in this in this column, that's what that's what data gives you, is the page rank. So the other place where this is actually useful is if people are tracking their page position or their uh, page one position, what words they rank on page one. Would that be correct if I said? Yeah, that? it's it's kind of a it's not like a daily thing because it not, you know my back end is scraping like once every week, so it's kind of a weekly data report. Um, but yeah, you can get your general kind of position every week um, using this simple search. So you could also technically combine this with another type of tool that tracks your daily position for certain keywords as well. Is that correct? Yeah, if you, uh, yep. Okay, yep. If, you're, if you wanted to actually go through that trouble and all that. Yeah. And then here are the extensive search. Um, I'll go through that quick here. So there was 558 uh, keywords that came up. With. So with the the difference for the extensive search, it still gives you the the position of the the page position of the key of the keyword for that asset. But what this extensive does, it it actually ranks it based on a bunch of data points I have. Um, it gives you kind of the best to worst um, for this asset that the keywords you should go for possibly for this type of product. Um, so let's. I just want to take a look at it quick. What it is, just for my. So there's foot menders, uh, kids orthotics thing. Um, so it kind of sorts it from best to worst. How people are basically how people are finding it, um, and and buying it. Um, there's a lot of factors that, that that are considered, but for the most part, that's what it is. Is that like this one? Most people are using this term to buy this product, and. Um, and then the next one is they're actually using the, the brand to find the product. So there's kind of a clue as to um, how uh, how uh, how this brand is doing on Amazon. So if they're how entrenched they are in their position on Amazon, I guess. If that comes up higher, then you're this that brand is not even the brand for that uh, for that product. Yeah, it's their product after searching on a brand name, they're coming over to this product, which is pretty fascinating that that's the second most uh, relevant keyword for them. So yeah, it's it's uh, down here on the kind of past, past the kids' earths, but it's still on that page. is pretty crazy. 
So yeah, um, so here's the rank right here that I give it, best to worst. So way at the bottom here, you'll find some errant kind of keywords that don't really necessarily work, but Cup's five year old, um, which is kind of weird. But so the lower that keyword gets on this list, the kind of the least concerned you should be with it, but it's still kind of there for you. Um, uh, so then I also give you this this extra thing here where it takes all the words from all these keywords, kind of makes them, and then puts a rank on them on how they come up. So flat came up first, feet, and then shoes, and kids erts, and then shoe, and then inserts for kids, and then it kind of gets rid of all the duplicates, and it just shows it how they come up first. And these are good for, so all this is good for your optimization again. So you'll probably want to get this near your beginning of your product title. Um, and then obviously you can't put this in your product title, but you could put this in your uh, in your search terms fields to get that kind of ranking for that if you want to go for that. Um, you don't have to, but and yeah, you you'll kind of want to get these kind of we discussed this. Yeah, there's also other places you can get those keywords in. You can get them in uh, your questions. You can get them in your yeah. uh, reviews, like all that kind of stuff. It's, it, you know, if they're valuable for you, it's great to grab them. Yep. Yeah, all these are definitely going to be valid before you just going to you know, put them in the right place. Right. Um, so one more question for you, James. Yeah. I know you briefly touched on like this particular example where you've got kids erts at the top. Um, what do you have you seen instances where you've got like the top ten spots are all brand like all are their brand name in particular? What does that, if anything, mean about a certain product? Does that mean they have a pretty good opportunity to go for? Keywords other than their own brand name, if they're already getting um, like sales. I'm not sure exactly what you're meaning, but I've I've seen them where there's been a lot of brands near the top. That just means it's people are really using the brand name versus the generic title, you know, generic type of product it is to find that product. So, you know, that might not be a product you want to go for, or yeah, it might it might be maybe. Um, if I'm the actual seller, then it's probably a good thing. And it yeah. means that I need I need to more to bring in more keywords other than my own brand name, right? Is that? Yeah, because you're already kind of dominating the brand, so you should be going after the ones you aren't, you know, dominating yet. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. and so oh, go ahead, Mike. Because because is is that the core? Like that's one of our core objectives with this tool is pretty much to say, hey, either what what keywords am I? not going for that I should be going for or maybe you know what are keywords that I'm not going strongly enough for but one way or the yeah. other the, the, would you say that that's like one of the top kind of best practices of using this tool is to identify keywords that you may not have been going after and, and uh, focus in on them more yeah you'll definitely find you'll definitely find that you're gonna there's gonna be a lot of keywords that you probably would have never thought of but they come they, they come up at the top here or wherever you know, you just you're just like well, I didn't think that was a keyword. <laughs> so it's definitely yeah, it takes a lot of the manual work out of searching for keywords. Yeah, it definitely Michael, gives you a lot of ideas you would never think of. So yeah, M Michael Bittler, I spotted uh, uh, something that that we hadn't thought of necessarily for hydrophy for kids, which is the word orthotics, which is another you know, and it ma makes definitely. me think actually there's a place um, that. Uh, Works. There's a place I go to get massages, and they have kind of a business alliance with a place called Fleet Feet, which is all they do is foot inserts and orthotics and put you in the right shoes. And I'm actually thinking about going over there, Michael, and talking to them kind of on your behalf and trying to drill down and see if I can get some. But I, but weirdly enough, I wouldn't have thought of it if if, uh, if James hadn't pulled all this up for us. Over over pronation, orthotics. <laughs> yeah. See, if you if you don't know anything about this kind of stuff, then you're definitely going to want to use this tool. So that you can gain some knowledge and insight on the, what people are looking for. So, yeah, the pain point there. It looks like the pain point is flat feet. So, like, uh, f flat feet is kind of that sort of makes sense because um, that's kind of the, the pain point. You know, like somebody who just found out that their kid or they, they themselves have flat feet, and um, so yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, Kids Orthotics has a search of uh, a little over a thousand, so it's not a bad keyword for this specialization. Sure. Yeah, and and, and it's it's kind of a hair on fire keyword. That's one of the good things is once people are searching for the actual word orthotics, they've probably been to a doctor, and so there it's it's not like a passing muse. It's something that where they've really 
they've thought about it and it's, it's probably a, um, a point of concern for them. Liz, um, uh, is, is that one of the primary ways that you're using this is to kind of scope out keywords that, that you should be going for? Right. The two main things that I use it for is to find keywords that I should be going for and then down the line I like to scrape my listing every now and then to see where I'm falling for certain keywords and uh, figure out how I could better optimize my listing. So I, use, I like to use it in two instances. Now, what would be an example of that second? I, I think the first one's probably pretty apparent to people. Uh, uh, the, second, the second one would be like how we were discussing Elite Serum earlier, and that's one of the primary reasons why I asked James uh, what happens when you have a, a scrape where all the top ten keywords are primarily brand-driven. That's yeah. the first thing that I noticed on the Elite Serum scrape that we did is that all of Tim's top ten searches were all Elite Serum. And while he's selling the product really well because he's established his brand, he needs to bring in some of some other keywords that yeah. some of his competitors are using in order to start ranking for those as well because he's already doing pretty well with the brand. So that's kind of like locked in. So yeah. now he needs to sort of add in um, some additional keywords that he's not actually already targeting that aren't so much brand driven. Yeah. So that would be a perfect example. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to um, actually pull up that Asian in a moment. Uh, Michael Bittler, can we first start with, the, uh, do, do you want to take a look at, at one or two more of your other Asians that we've pulled up uh, to just look and see, you know, just kind of get the experience and, you know, we, we have Definitely. one of the experience. What's that? Yeah. In fact, uh, James, if you want to uh, click on the link I just put in the uh, chat box for you, that uh, link is actually uh, a Google Sheet that I actually have here that's, um, got like the top four or five competitors for Hydrophy Kids and Kids uh, Search. So kind of takes the first one that we see there and this uh, particular document, uh, if you can pull that up, James, the uh, the bottom link. Uh, basically what that does is that does take those top competitors. And what we did with the CSV files that, you know, you show, James showed you the online version, he has a, uh, a common separate value text file that basically I take those files and I put them all into one sheet and then I kind of set them up side by side and, and document what the product was so I can kind of make a comparison on what some of those top keywords are. And, uh, and Michael, what did you do to set these up side by side? Was it uh, pretty complex? Did you do that yourself or does the product already act like this way? That's just a cut and paste. You know, I open up a file. Yeah, you download to CSV and then you open it up and then here it brings up the... Um, one of these days I gotta do this in within the tool, but this is kind of Michael Bittler's uh, extra processing method of it. So you just kind of copy everything, or actually you can just kind of use this first one, and then you you keep doing this for each ASIN, and then you just kind of stick them next to each other. Uh, where'd that one go? There's a Google Doc. Oh, okay. Yeah, and for, and for a moment, if somebody's destroying it because you can't see data, none of us can see it. It's just more conceptual at this point where yeah. you're highlighting. So you drag across the top of the column. Yeah, exactly. So this is how... My, just uh, kind of copy yeah. and paste. Yep. In the upper right-hand corner, if you go up to the, the box with the three bars on Chrome, you should be able to make that zoom in and make that a little bit bigger. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how to do that. Where now? Upper right-hand corner, right below the closeout Xbox. There's a the drop down, and you should be able to zoom and make that about 175 percent. Are are you working with Chrome? Yeah, I am. <laughs> um, okay, it's it's the uh, it's the options window. It's on the same. It's customized. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Just take that zoom that to like 175 percent, and then they should be able to see it pretty well. Perfect. Yeah, much better. All right, great. And, and so just to quickly review what Mike did to make this sheet sort of side-by-side, -side, just for people who don't know how to use Excel, is w what you just saw uh, James doing, which is he highlighted the first one, two, three, four, five, six fields, just clicking and dragging across the top, and then he would just hit a Control-C, and then, you know, to the right of that, drop it in, you know, Control-V, if that makes sense. So he's showing you right now how that would work. Just, just, just real simple cut and paste. Yeah. Yeah, and again, if you don't know how Excel works, it, it, there's tons of um, 
that, that was just a quick idea. And also, you don't even necessarily have to set things up this way, but but you can watch you know Excel. We we don't want to exactly turn this into, into an Excel tutorial uh, or a. Uh, but you can also use micro uh, or uh, Sun Systems open office for this. Okay, great. So, Mike, uh, you're stacking these up side by side, and w what are we? Uh, uh, why are you doing that? This is how you uh, do some product research. I, I'm looking for some commonalities here. I'm looking for commonalities and outliers. Okay, so what I'm trying to find out is, you know, flat feet shoes, you know, that was what generated the most volume for foot minders, but, you know, what are the other commonalities? So, like, arch uh, foot minders, archangels, and kid zerts all were, you know, really responsible for, um, you know, for most of these sales, for, even for the off-brands. So that's going to kind of tell me kid zerts probably is one of the keywords that we want to have in, in our back end. We're not necessarily going to put it in our title or our you know product because it's it's a brand name, but we are going to go back and put that probably in our search terms box so that we show up under uh, kids search when that comes up as well. And again, we can um, certainly just to kind of point it out to people, we can certainly sneak those keywords into um, strategically into reviews and into uh, questions to, so we can still uh, possibly show up for them in the search a little better. Exactly. So you know, for there, I'm going to look for. I'm going to look for those commonalities. I'm also going to look for the outliers. I'm going to look for uh, things that you know should make sense for my product. You know, uh, flat feet shoes is probably probably going to be a pretty decent one. It's it's the top one for foot miners. We probably want to show up somewhere for that keyword. Now, if the keyword's not extremely relevant to my specific product, but I still want to show up, I'm going to put those words that we want to rank for, that we want to come up in the keyword search, I'm going to put those in the back section of the keyword search terms box. So they're not necessarily going to show up in the title. They won't necessarily show up in the bullets. Uh, so we don't necessarily want to confuse anybody as to what our product is, but yet we still want to appear in those uh, search terms when they are searching for the various keywords that we see other our other competitors are selling product on. Um, Michael, you have, uh, just to give people a point of comparison, of course, you have a very, very successful um, adult uh, inserts product, HydroFeet. Uh, what, what does HydroFeet look like when you, put, when you put it into this sort of a search? What is HydroFeet like? I mean, as far as what in the yeah, search? Like, like, what are you seeing Like when you pull up HydroFeet? What do you um, see in terms of results using James's tool? Well, I mean, I, it, it's worked out pretty phenomenally for us. I think uh, I think Hydrofeed is currently uh, number one for massaging insoles, which is uh, our primary uh, keyword in Amazon. And we haven't done a lot of Google ranking on that yet. But you know, our, our first uh, point was was trying to get to the uh, you know trying to get to our main you know long term keywords and massaging insoles. We've uh, we got up to number one uh, pretty well and. Uh, we actually outrank Dr. Scholl's, you know, which is, is pretty nice. Right. Now, um, the, the one I really want to get after and get up to number one on is just going to be straight out insoles, which you know, is pretty broad and is pretty wide. But uh, massaging insoles is, uh, you know, it's, it's a niche. It's uh, something we're really specific into. And that was kind of the ones that we focused on with some of our social signals, with some of our uh, you know, super URLs and things like that to try to drive traffic. Uh, we were able to achieve that, and so now we're, you know, we've we've achieved number one there. So now we're going after the bigger fish, since we've gotten some of our niche keywords that are generating sales for us. Now we're going back after some of the other, uh, some of the search terms that we want to try to rank for, that are obviously going to be harder, but certainly can be done. Be great. All right, great. So, uh, do, do we want to go back to that uh, spreadsheet? And by, and by the way, J James, are you searching for something in, in particular that, that you saw, or uh, just a little bit brainstorming there? No, I was just trying to trying to figure out. I'm not an insoles guy, so I don't know what people are looking for. So I don't have any background in it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, just trying to get a lay of the land there. Yeah. Um, so okay, great. So we're we're seeing uh, a comparative right now between Footminders and Archangels, and so um, we've got flat feet shoes um, that I'm seeing for for Footminders. Um, like like Michael said, we're looking for commonalities. So um, we have a lot of Arch support keywords for Archangels. Interestingly enough, um, which there is a little bit of a commonality. Nine and ten for Footminders is Arch support. For children and art support for kids, uh, we've got insoles for kids. With yeah, 
I actually think insoles for kids is probably like that's the primary one they're all going for, and shoe inserts for kids. Yeah, I think those are really. I'm I'm interested to see what Merchant Words says about those. Even though uh, we did briefly talk a little bit earlier um, about the fact that Merchant Words, while it's quite useful, um, it's not always exact. They use a lot of Google search data uh, for that. Where James's tool is, is strictly based on uh, Amazon, there's no other extraneous data that's uh, coming up into that. It's just based on Amazon searches. Yeah, I can't get on a Merchant Words for some reason. <laughs> they, 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 they might have banned you, James. <laughs> <laughs> so um, shoe, <laughs> shoe shoe inserts for kids has about three thousand searches. Um, insoles for kids. Curious to see what they actually have. And Liz is going through uh, Merchant Words right now. Yeah, Insoles for Kids is the primary one that we're actually uh, focused on in, in Michael's actual listing, and that has 8,000 uh, monthly search volume. Uh, Michael, do you recall what the second word was that has the 5,500? Do you see that anywhere? Uh, that's Arch Support for Kids. Is uh, yeah. got about 5,500. So, so Archangels has it at number four. Um, so foot miners at ten. Actually, I'm thinking. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, our changes at four. Got it. I don't see it on the third one, but it seems like you've got a pretty good idea already of what you're going to go for based off of what we've seen here today. Yeah, I think we, we've uh, we've kind of you know this is kind of the process we went through in identifying what the uh, the various keywords were that we wanted to put together at least for the title and you know certainly the the two most relevant there uh, that we found from Merchant Words, insoles for kids and arch support for kids, certainly are showing up in Amazon is is, is uh, definitely words we want to use. Uh, probably the you know the, the big find here that we would not have found had we not done this reverse ASIN search, it would have been the fact that we probably would have missed out on how many people are searching for kids certs. And so you know one of the things that really made a lot of sense to me when. Uh, you know, James and I started talking about the, the benefit of doing um, this reverse ASIN search is how do you do keyword search if you don't know what the keywords are? Yeah. You know, so this actually goes out and scrapes those keywords off of what your competitors' ASINs are, what's generating sales for them, and it allows you to think on a much broader basis than what you're necessarily thinking about on your own as to what those keywords are because it's going to open up a whole different world of what those keywords are than necessarily what you would have thought. Well, so, I'll tell you one thing. You, you might not be able to go for the brand name very well in, in Amazon, but you can sure go after it in Google. <laughs> can't, yeah. uh, can't stop you from doing that. Right. And, you know, one of the interesting things that I see here on, on Kidserts that will be interesting once uh, he actually does get into the niche is, like, they're sort of all over the place. Um, there's not any – it just goes to show, like, we talked about inside of OMG how you can take the fact that you just know how to sell on Amazon and then get a cut of, of somebody's uh, brand or Amazon sales. Uh, kids are, instead of like focusing on having one parent child listing with all their ASINs tied together, they're sort of like all separate listings. So I don't know if you, you sort of noticed that, Mike or James, uh, even yeah, you, Mike it, Long. It looks, it looks like product vomit. It looks pretty crazy. So they're sort of like all over the place. In fact, they have some listed in clothing and some listed in health. So I'm not too sure what they're actually doing. I even see one in industrial and scientific too. Yeah, so it's it's sort of like Mike said. It's like product vomit. It's all over the place. So this is exactly, I know that there's people were saying, well, you know, I'm not interested in selling on Amazon. You don't have to be to actually realize that you can make a lot of money doing this if you just learn kind of the, intricacies like inside and that's sort of what James is teaching you here today. Yeah, these best practices. Um, do, uh, uh, why, why don't we pull up um, the ASIN for, um, for Lead Serum uh, District. Sure. Okay. Uh, can you do this one more uh, thing that Mike's going to put in here, James? What's that? Uh, can you run a, a search on this one that he's going to... Yeah, it's that yeah, top one right there. Yeah, that top right. one? Yeah. That's the one. It's going to show you how fast and easy this really is. It's pretty cool. 
And this is the one that I actually told you about, James, where it's like all the top ten keywords are like brand driven. Okay. Except for there's one there's one that's not. Yeah, or Geraldine, uh, I serum or something. There you go. How yeah, is that? There wasn't even a delay there. Yeah, definitely fast. So it looks yeah. like all the top 17 are, 16 are the brand except for one. Yeah, two, I think. Two? But, but okay. yeah, very, but very few, yeah. Huh. So, James, uh, just a quick question to you. What, if, if this was like a product that you were looking at in terms of the keyword research, what would you do to get it uh, ranked a little bit better in terms of keyword, keyword-wise? Um, what would I do without knowing? <laughs> oh, I, 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 if I do on that, I'll kind of help uh, Bill James out a little bit. You know, if you go to the top of that category, uh, we're in eye serums, right? Yep. So why not start with the keyword eye serums and let's see what comes up. Okay, so you would go uh, broad, that broad? I, I would because what we're trying to find out is we want to try to find out what some of the top sellers are and so we we put in eye serum and the, the first three all say eye serum they all have eye serum right there in their title so I would grab all three of those ASINs for all three of those brands I would throw them into keyword inspector and then run those searches run those CSVs and then put them side by side and we'll see exactly what's popping up for these guys and we'll find start to find out what are they selling it on what are their keywords you know we we take ice serum being pretty broad, but this is this now will tell us who those competitors are and where they're generating their sales from. So I, yeah, I think yeah. we'll see as he puts those in, we're going to start to get really enlightened as to what those keywords are. It's like we said, if we don't know what those keywords are already, it's kind of hard to do that research. And that's why the reverse engineering of these ASINs it comes so uh, absolutely handy. Acid caffeine. <laughs> How's that? So this is the simple search, the because this this uh, extended one can sometimes take a while. Yeah. Is this yeah. the is this actually the elite serum? There it's done. No, he he grabbed another. He, he grabbed okay. the number one eye serum. Bags under eyes treatment, puffy eyes. Yeah. Dermagist. What, eye what's dermagist? <laughs> brand, I'm guessing. I don't even know what a dermagist is. Yeah, it's probably a brand, like Mike said. No, I don't see any brands for it. I'll check brand, Google. Brand, brand, brand. There it is. You're searching that. It doesn't even come up. It's a brand, but it's not even on Amazon. That's crazy. People are... If you could resell Dermagist, there's some money. Absolutely, wow. you would definitely make some money. Yeah, <laughs> dermagist and coming up with uh, instant natural eye cream is the number one search for that. So there, there's one, Mike. These people are searching for the brand. They don't find the brand. Yeah. So I, I would think you would have ranked number one for dermagist. Actually, if you put that on the back end, dermagist is getting 137,000 searches according to Merchant wow. Words. Oh my gosh, That's crazy. There's so a lot. That of might be a, a good tactic just in its own. Put that on your back end search words. And you'll yeah. probably be the only one that pops up. People will just be curious and push through there, like click through there. Yeah, great. So this is the this is the top product based on the, you know, yeah. obviously and, and, and I, I don't know much. anything about this product, so I just eye serums is the kind of what we use to seed it, and yeah. then we found the top selling for that for that keyword, and they've got a pretty good ranking for uh, 1270, and they're number six in eye serums category so so you're gonna wanna pick when you're doing this research you wanna pick the top products not necessarily I don't know why you guys picked the other one but that's what I would do is, as far as research for seeing how there's a, there's no you know besides yeah, this one outlier here that nobody's selling at all which is crazy but you got yeah. all these different general terms that people are using and I don't see any other GenuCells and other ones probably not even on Amazon I don't know though. So, Valive. Yeah, it's not necessarily a big brand dominated, but obviously people are searching for brands that 
they like that aren't even on there, which is kind of like GenuCell's not on Amazon that I can see. Yeah, so great. Um, yeah, and, and mostly what we're seeing is is kind of what we'd expect in this case. Uh, you know, pain point keywords, dark circles under eyes, bags under eyes, eye serum for puffiness, eye serum for wrinkles, eye bags men. Um, one of the things we're thinking about doing is creating a, a sort of more of a men's branded version. Um, tired eyes. Um, yeah. Eye puffiness cream. You know, one of the, the beauties of this thing, too, is, you know, we're getting into specific long tails that people are actually searching for. And yeah. you know, the difference in an S, you know, cream or creams is going to give you different search results and, and different rankings. So while they may come up, you know, if That's you can fun. get specific into those specific long tails, you know, you're going to grab a lot more, uh, a lot more of those. The beauty of, of James' system, while we may not be able to cram all four, five hundred, six hundred, we might even have a thousand here, different keywords that can be ranked for, you know, the thing is you want to get the most important, maybe the top 10 or 15 long tails that you possibly can right into your listings, either into your product tile, into your bullets, or into your keyword search terms. But then the you're not going to be able to get all thousand long tails. But this is where the second part of James's uh, software comes in, and this is where he's taking the unique words, because Amazon claims, and whether it's totally accurate or not, Amazon claims that if you have any combination of those words in your keyword search terms box, your title, your uh, manufacturer, or your brand, that that will uh, show up in, in search suggest. And so, like. The words you would want to have, starting up at the very top, James, has you see bags, bags under eyes treatment. Okay, so you want to make sure somewhere you have those four keywords. Uh, puffy eyes. Now you see eyes has already appeared, so we don't need to say eyes again. If we get the word puffy in there, we're going to get that credit for that long tail by making up different combinations. Um, under eye dark circle serum. So under eye dark circle serum. Uh, serum for eyes. Okay, we've already said eyes, so we don't need to say eyes again, but then eye shows up. So as you're going down through, we take those top, you know, probably 50 words potentially, and we try to make sure we can include as many of those words into our listing as we can, either in the product title, in the keyword search terms box in the back, or in the product bullets. Because if those combinations, just having the word C in there, you know, if we, we wanted to go for vitamin C and we don't have the word C, the letter C by itself, that's we won't make up that search term and we're probably not going to show up uh, or rank up for it if we don't actually use those keywords somewhere in the listing. So the uniqueness of uh, getting rid of the duplicates of the words is going to allow us to make up some combination of those keywords even though they're not necessarily going to be long tail in the right order, which is preferred, but since we can't get all those words in, we want, you know, as long tails, we want to get those words in individually somewhere in that, uh, either in the title, in the search terms box, or, you know, second choice, third choice is probably the, the bullets will still bring up a little bit. Great. So does anybody else have any questions for James uh, before he starts going on and showing us like some of the other exciting things he's working on? Like one of the things that I'm definitely looking forward to is the PPC tool. Yeah, let's, let's see the PPC tool, James. That sounds great. All right. So I've um, been working on this for a little over a month here. Let's see. Here. It'll be basically on the same site, um, but it'll just be under maybe we're – adtracker.keywordinspector.com. I'm not sure yet, but so it'll kind of use the same front end as far as adding. Uh, we'll go to that here. I'll use kind of the same front end. It'll just have a little extra once I get it kind of implemented. But you'll stick all the keywords in here. Um, so don't worry about that. Let's see here. And you stick in all the keywords you want to start tracking for the ads, and you'll stick them in here. And then um, you can uh, name your search, advertise, and then um, uh, what's this search was doing? It's basically it's using the right now. I'll be using the mobile uh, the mobile search results. Uh, you get you know two ads per at the bottom of each search, but it's kind of 
if you go on a regular desktop, the most of the searches usually line up as far as like the ones on the right side at the top. Uh, when you do a search right here, they kind of most of the time they kind of line up with the ones down here. You know, the first two probably match. Let's see here. So yeah, that one, and then they kind of they change all the time. So it's not really necessarily exact science, but um, so I'll show you that. But you'll be able to search a bunch of different, you know, as many ads as you want, up to however many ads, because I found some some keywords produce like hundreds of ads. So it's just you just can't scrape all that stuff. So uh, you know, do that, and then you can do like a daily or hourly search if you want to kind of fine tune how many times you want to put it on a graph type of thing, but and then you can uh, just kind of put in acid you want to search, but it'll, you'll still be able to get all the data that comes up through it. So I'll show you that here. So once you do, do that search, the, the system will go out and start searching those those uh, those keywords that you put in there. And um, so I've got a bunch of searches that I've done. Uh, I haven't done like any of the ones that you guys have been looking at hydro feed or anything, but I'll go into this this portable speakers thing. So let's see here. So this came out. I did a, like a 24 hour per hour type of search with a bunch of key, 500 keywords. James, can you make that a little bit bigger on your? Yeah, screen? it gets like 150 or something. Like that. Perfect. So uh, you know, I got a bunch of different things here. Um, but basically, I did like a search for every hour for 24 hours, and uh, and it goes it goes on Amazon and, and searches the keyword, and then it, it grabs kind of all the all the assets that come up, and for each page, it uh, gets the rank of each of each asset slash merchant that comes up. So I'll show you like the ads, like here this one I did so 500 times. 500 times 24 is 12,000, and then uh, almost 500,000 ads came up for the for all them searches. So uh, I've got some graphing features, and then some you can get all, basically grab all the data for that for that uh, search if you want to, on a, and do whatever you want with it in your thing. I've also got some extra data that I'll show you here. Um, so here it's, it's kind of interesting um, when I started doing this that when I when I Within the within the page, they have a within the kind of add the script they have. It actually gives a suggested department for that keyword, which is kind of interesting. I haven't really figured out why, but like every keyword has like a suggested department. So I don't know how to kind of analyze that, but it's kind of interesting. And then you got uh, put the images on here, and then the product titles, as and then here you got the position that it came up for that search. You know what page? Basically, it's kind of two per page. So, um, and then I've got here. If, if say like a keyword didn't produce any ads, this would be like a one right here. And then say um, say you were searching up to 50 ads per keyword, and it only grab only was able to grab 40. This will have like a last ad thing, so you know that that maybe that that keyword doesn't have as much competition. You'll be able to figure that out if that keyword ad doesn't have much competition. And then here's the merchant that was actually you know, producing that ad, paying for that ad. And then I've got some extra data here. Um, so I've actually got sales rank data. Um, it's not real-time sales rank data, but it's kind of basically within the past seven days or so, it kind of utilizes the keyword search tools data. And then um, it gives you a rank, a rating based off the reviews. Um, this reviews is like real-time when, when it was scraped for the ad. And then this is also real-time. I think that's real time. The price of it, um, and then also it gives you uh, the number of offers for, for that ASIN. Um, you know, obviously you can't have more than one offer. You can't really have more than one offer for a merchant, but it's for it's based off the the ASIN, not the merchant. So, and if it was a prime, prime uh, product, so you you can see how much data you can get from all this and I don't, you, I'm sure you guys are more into PPC than I am so I'm sure you could utilize this a lot better than me. So um, we'll go back to the ad searches and put up a graph here. So what this thing is good for is to, to actually track and graph your uh, graph everything. So I'm going to go to uh, search ASIN counts. So this will kind of kind of lump all the ASINs together into one per ad. So 
again, you got a little more data here. Actually, and just from the same thing. So you can actually sort this by, say, number of times that that asset was displayed within the, for the ads. So right here, this ad, particular asset was displayed, you know, 6,000 out of out of a half a million times, the most of on anywhere else. So, um, which is pretty crazy. So that, obviously that one's a that merchant is really pushing that that asset. So click the graph, and then here's where kind of the graphing begins. Uh, I think I think it messes up when I zoom in. Let's see what it does here. Let me see if I zoom up a out and then zoom in again. There we go. So here um, I've got the rankings for every hour of the search of that that the position of that ASIN within the keyword search. So here this one kind of went down, up and down, and uh, here up down. So there's the graphing feature of it. What um, do these dramatic swings mean, uh, James? What's that? What do these dramatic swings mean? So is, like, like I saw one where it was really high and then it dropped a lot. What does that mean? Um, so like right here it, it started at, I noticed that I haven't really dived into this yet. I've been doing more of the programming and bugs stuff than actually looking at the data yet, but I think since most of what I've seen is that it's happened where it was at like 12 a.m., I think they kind of right here maybe they, uh, you know, ran out or or their budget, budget kind of turned yeah. back on or off type of thing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. This seems reversed. That's at midnight, and then they run out of money pretty much by uh, before noon. Well, they, like, they had money, and then they ran out at midnight. That's what it looks like to me. And then it slowly they went back to the position 2 versus 10 and then you know again they they started to go back up so so I, I guess like where this can become really useful is like to somebody that's newer and they say I don't have the money to spend uh, hundreds of dollars a day on PPC they could actually go and analyze their competitors and figure out if there's any point where their budgets run out and then turn their PPC on at that moment yeah do you agree yeah they that could cheaply, like almost cheaply, run PPC. And it looks like the trend is that a lot of people's ad budget runs out <laughs> around midnight. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing. The other, the, the primary thing that we want to look for with, um, well, or one one of the big opportunities, uh, just traditionally, with being able to track advertisements, and it can be really powerful, is the traditional idea is that if somebody is advertising day after day, week after week, it's because they're making money with it. Right, right. So, A, that can be, first of all, you can reverse engineer it and say, hey, there's money to be made with this product. You know, so you can use this as, actually, it's a product research tool, interestingly enough. Uh, products that you may want to go into. Um, and, uh, and, you know, B, you know, like whose listing is converting, right? You know, presumably, this is going to give you an idea of whose listing is converting on paid traffic so you can, uh, glean some insight from that as well. Is, is that what you're thinking, Liz? Yeah, I would, I would definitely use it as that. Um, it could definitely be used as that, as as well as uh, just track overall tracking your competitors. I mean, some of these guys that are ranked at 240k, um, you can also watch. Like, I mean, what a guy ranked at 240,000, if he's continually spending money on it, then there's a certain reason that he's actually doing that. Um, and you can sort of see if eventually he stops doing it. That can give you an indication that he wasn't actually able to jump into the market. And so let me uh, let me give you uh, you know uh, if you did want to take a page out of Jack Harvell's book um, and, and partner with product, or if you want to take a, a page out of uh, Brian Williams product and do SEO client consulting. One of the things that we like to do, you know, in traditional SEO, client, sorry, if you want to do Amazon client consulting, one of the things we do in SEO is we look and say, well, who's spending money on pay-per-click ads? Those people would be a great, you know, if, if someone's spending a lot of money on personal injury ads, then that could be a great person to approach and say, hey, you're going after personal injury Chicago or personal injury um, St. Louis. Would you like to show up on page one of Google for that? Well, if you see somebody that they're busting out a huge ad spend on Amazon and still struggling with their overall sales, that could be a really great target to partner with product or, or uh, to do a um, you know to, to do some Amazon client consulting for them as well. 
Yeah, that's absolutely a great idea. This this would be some of the people that Brian talked about contacting yesterday. These would be prime candidates to actually contact and initiate a conversation the way but Brian and Jack talked about. You have so much data. It's like they, they got to feel like you have a crystal ball. Like, well, I see this is when you're spending money. This is what you're doing. Right. You know, so obviously, they're really very exciting. Right. Yeah, I, need, I, need to, I need to get with you guys, and you need to tell me how to how to make this work for you. Because I'm not a, I'm trying to learn as much as I can, but you guys obviously know a lot more than me. <laughs> so it would also be interesting to track these uh, ads over time and track their position. So if we could graph their sales budget, how much they're spending on a daily basis, with what their sales were, because we would start to see over time if their sales actually, if their uh, BSR actually increased. Yeah. Or actually, you know, they went down, so they were selling more. We would start to see the effectiveness of those ads. And if they basically yeah. keep spending money, but they never budged in their BSR, that's going to show their ads aren't working, that their product's not converting. Yeah, or or, or that it is. You know, uh, uh, either way, you're going to learn a lot. Uh, Michael Bittler's exactly right about that. And uh, Amazon un uniquely lets us do that. You can't really do that with Google pay per clicks because we don't know what people when when someone's running Google pay per clicks and they're a personal injury attorney or they're selling their own e-commerce on their website. We have no idea how they're converting none. You know, like we, we just have to guess. But on Amazon, we can at least follow it vis-a-vis -vis their BSR exactly the way that Michael Bittler is saying it. So, so I think that this, uh, this new tool could be a wellspring of uh, information for us. Right, and I feel like the same way. I think all of James' tools are, like, underutilized. I think there's a lot of things that you can get from all of them. That's pri primarily one of the reasons why we sort of wanted to invite him on this webinar because he's got a, a great suite of tools. Um, and... Um, they're definitely something that I use on a daily basis, pretty much. Yeah, one of the things we're gonna have to do, James, if if you're open to it, is is once we uh, open this up inside of uh, OMG and, and and get people using some, you know, I know we're gonna have some questions, so we should uh, certainly have you on a follow up webinar to, uh, yeah. to help people's biggest yeah. questions. No problem, I can do that. That'd be great. James, I know we only have about ten or fifteen minutes left here. Could you take yeah. a few moments and maybe uh, once you go through the reporting? aspect because I know that's an extremely valuable tool for uh, being able to go out and search your Amazon data on a real-time basis. Search methodologies that Amazon does not allow you to do to find your customers. Your tool will, uh, will go out and grab that data, search and you know, return phone numbers, return an enormous wealth of, of data and information that's uh, very valuable and that this we can use this data to do a lot of things including uh, grabbing phone numbers and coming up with you know custom audiences on Facebook and advertising so we, like crank call them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, crank call them, but even better is retarget. You know, pixel. Them. Oh, we can use it to make money. Right. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, no fun. But yeah, you know, we can certainly throw an ad in front of them every uh you know yeah. every two minutes that they're on Facebook and and, and, um, and they, they are your they are your customers at, at that point so. Uh, you know, you have the right to contact them. You can do uh, outbound calls and, and and so on, and so long as you can get the data. So yeah, let's ha let's have a look. Yeah, so uh, this is available at couponscarcity.keywordinspector.com. There's a link to it at simple.keywordinspector.com. So yeah, we'll, we'll, way you can, we'll yeah. So um, so I got a, a lot of this is great for reports. So I'll just go into that. Uh, yeah. So I've got a few things. Uh, you'll be able to download all your like customer orders along with uh, along with your uh, phone numbers and all that, and then you can kind of you can uh, go by ass assin, like Michael said, uh, and I'm not sure exactly what to put in here, but you can uh, click. You know, you can basically drill down as much as you want into reports of. Things. Let me uh, bring up. See here. Yeah, one of the most useful things that, as Mike pointed out earlier, which was cool, which I didn't realize, is you can actually pull up an order by uh, the person's name. We know how much of a pain in the ass it could be when somebody contacts you and says, "Hey, you know, um, this was wrong with my order or something," and then you sort of, it, you usually have to reply back if it doesn't include an order number and ask them, you know, what's your order number. But by just having their first and last name. This is gives you the ability to potentially be able to pull up that order. Is that correct? 
Yeah, and it's really useful when you're you've got the customer on the phone. If you're doing phone customer service and the customer's called you up and they said, I placed this order, you know, but they don't have their order ID number, it's next to impossible on Amazon to go out and find that customer's order without the order ID. This allows you while you're on the phone in a real time basis to go out and grab that data and, and, and see what, you know, see who it is, what they ordered. You can sort of bring this out by uh, demographics. You can sort this by state or city or zip code. Um, so let's say, you know, just say, what's your zip code? And bring up everybody in that particular zip code that purchased the product this year. And you can easily go out and, and find that data and say, oh, okay, here they are. You find their, you find their order. You find their, everything about them, that where it was shipped to, their phone number. It all comes back. And that, I think that's probably one of the most uh, fascinating parts of this is data that Amazon does not give us the ability to go out and search on within Seller Central, we get access to all that on the back end here. Um, right. Up, this is going to really show that it's, I think, yeah. very useful. Obviously, right. what's in the customer, that's just critical. Liz? Yeah, it's sort of like what we were talking about earlier. When you actually want to take the time to actually call your customers, if, if there's some people that actually still do that, um, I know for a fact I use a service to do that for me, but you can actually take the time to call them yourself. It's a pain in the butt to really actually go and get that phone number. You have to go through several clicks, and if you're having a VA have to do it or anything, it takes some time. Whereas uh, with James's tool here, uh, from my understanding, you can just download that information into a CSV, and then if you want to be like really ninja about it, you can load those uh, phone numbers into a custom audience on Facebook and run ads to those people if you want to for like a follow-up purchase for a coupon or, or something like that. Survey, customer appreciation day, you know, get a discount. Uh, Come, come to our site. You know, we, you're a past customer. We love you. Come on back. You know, uh, and uh, especially on products that are uh, consumable products that people will use over and over again. Uh, having repeat customers is your lifeblood. So if you can get them to come back a month or two months later, whatever your time frame is that they may have used up the product and they're ready to reorder, then that's a great opportunity for you to start going out there and uh, you know do a custom audience and start hitting them, get them out to your uh, you know, get them out to your landing page, you know, put a pixel and retarget them, and, uh, you know, start to get them on your list. Yeah, this is, this is really exciting, and, and uh, probably the most exciting thing about this, uh, Liz and Michael, is that, because that you, you guys know the landscape of sellers a lot, you guys do a lot of networking, most sellers have no idea about this stuff. I mean, by far, I mean, uh, Liz, out of, out of 10 sellers, how many people do you think know about the, these tools or you, you know even how to get this data? Out of 10? How about out of 100? <laughs> Maybe one. Liz, do you think that that's, do you agree with that? Liz, you may be muted. Oops, yeah, I'm muted. I'm talking to myself. Um, I would agree that it's, it's very few that actually use this. They're sort of like doing everything by hand, which again, we know it takes time. Or they, they're just not sort of like in the know, you know, like personally for me, I don't have really a, a ton of time to be combing like message boards and, and looking for the the next new thing or anything like that. So I sort of have to get like almost hang out with the right people in order to, for them to tell me like, hey, have you checked this out? So I would imagine there's quite a bit of people like me. And then there's a lot of new people that just don't know what to use and are sort of like even scared to get a product going. So, yeah, I would probably have to agree that it's quite low. The number is. Yeah, and then and then obviously any sort of corporation or, or, or small business that's not even dialed into these small internet market communities like OMG, there's no chance. They have no idea. Yeah, Ab yeah absolutely. There's probably several people that aren't that aren't like the biggest brand, but they have a pretty good brand following. Uh, but they don't know how to break into Amazon, and they wouldn't know the first thing about how to sell their products on Amazon. It's a whole new ball game just because they have a lot of. Uh, social following and, and you know e-commerce stores that do pretty decent. That doesn't guarantee success on Amazon. Now, obviously, with uh, with, with uh, Keyword Inspector, uh, with, with with this tool uh, for the seller coupon and scarcity tool, uh, you, you of course have tutorial videos on how this works. Uh, uh, is that is that correct, James? Yeah, I've got some uh, some that go through most of it. I I got to update some of them and all that, obviously. But um, and I'm kind of going through I've got you know more than 70,000 orders that my mine's going through that's why it's kind of going slow but um, so yeah but you use this tool yourself so that's kind yeah. of good news for the uh, good news for our uh, for, for, for our crowd here 
Right, and I think the super important part, again, is, is the fact that James is actually creating these tools and he's a seller. So he's got all that experience. He sort of knows what's needed. And that's kind of how he started creating the tools because he needs to automate his own stuff. So I think that's really key uh, versus having somebody that, you know, is kind of like um, he's it's been the in the retail selling. arbitrage game. Yes, yeah. not, right. not just guru selling a product that's often a disaster. Right. Uh -huh. he's, he's been in the game since retail arbitrage. So, yeah, I don't know what else you guys want to see. <laughs> yeah, I think since we're kind of like limited on time, yeah. um, we could definitely have James on for to show yeah. a couple like the coupon tool that that is also in there. And I think there's one other one, isn't there, Michael? Uh, the coupon tool and also the scarcity tool. Yeah, okay. and now that we've introduced it, uh, probably what we'll wind up doing is just our own back-end videos for this. Like, like I'm, I'm kind of realizing it's probably just the better thing for us to do is create our own training on it or maybe work with James on that and on, on a different occasion. But this is a, a really tremendous introduction, and I, I know that I, I know that you know, once again people are at home, uh, Michael, just, you know, just uh, standing up and cheering. Um, you know, the, you know if, they, if they didn't know about this stuff, even if they knew about some of James's tools but not all the applications of it and so forth, so I think this is going to be great news. Thank you so much, Liz and Michael, for, for bringing James to us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> awesome. Great. Yeah, James, thank you very much. It's It's been awesome. Loved having you on. You know, you're a uh, great seller first, but uh, also uh, probably one of the smartest programmers as far as identifying what we need, I think, before most people even realize that they need it. And, you know, you're kind of meeting that need before most people even realize that there's a need out there. So when they figure it out that, okay, wouldn't it be great if there was a tool that does this, you're already going to have all that up there and ready for them. And that's really just fascinating. And then um, we're, uh, I guess you, we're going to do like a special for you guys too. Did you guys want to talk about that? You, yeah. We, we, we love to hear about specials. We'll, yeah. So we'll yes. try and get that worked out, but uh, uh, you'll probably get like uh, extra credits or, um, I've actually got for the keyword inspector. There's a kind of a better front end with with some keyword actual tracking, like daily tracking of stats, uh, keyword positions, and BSRs. Uh, we'll have a coupon for that. Oops, that's not what I want. For the, if you go to keywordinspector.com without the simple or the coupon scarcity as a subdomain, um, I'll have a coupon for this or a bunch of coupons for the different levels of Pricing, but this kind of has it has all it has uh, the keyword uh, simple keyword inspectors uh, attached to it and kind of puts it all together. But if you just want to do you know get down and dirty real quick, you can do the simple search. Um, but yeah, we'll get those to you, and I'm sure you'll post them along with these videos or uh, you know with the replays of these videos. So yes, yeah, it's so good. It's very exciting for people. Right, super awesome. Thank you, James. That was awesome. Thank you. I'm really excited about this relationship. We're looking forward to doing a lot of business. Yeah. Thanks, James. God bless you guys. Good night, everybody.